have our challenges, but we are alive and well. So could everybody in the auditorium just worship the Lord this morning? Come on. Let's give let's send some praises up to him this morning. Praise of thanksgiving, praise of adoration. He has been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you have been so good. In spite of all, you are good, God. Hallelujah. Thank him for healing. Thank him for deliverance. Thank him for pro providing. Maybe when we think what we're going to do, what we're going to eat, God provided. His hands are provided for us this morning. Lord, we bless your name this morning. We glorify your mighty name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We wanted to just come. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. We ask the Lord to fill our cup this morning. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I walk no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. Cup, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Lift it up, Lord. Oh, come and quench the thirsting. Oh, bread of heaven, bread. Feed me, feed me till I want. As we sing and make it personally this morning, Lord, fill my cup. Lift up the cup before God this morning. Eat up, Lord. Oh, come and quench the sin. So, bread of heaven, feed me till I want. with one more time feel my cup feel my cup Lord. I lift it up Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench come and quench the sin of my soul As we pray, as we pray, 
as prayer fill now fill this place oh the glory oh the glory of your presence of your presence we your temple we give you reverence give you reverence so arise so arise from your rest and be blessed by your praise as we glory in your way pray in your way One more time, oh, the glory, the glory of your presence. We your temple. We give you reverence. Oh, so I rise from your rest and be blessed by. As we glory in your, in your embrace, as your presence, no fill this place. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The glory of your presence, Lord. Feel this place, oh Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory, oh Lord. We give you glory. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, we praise you. Raise the praise to him this morning. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Raise the praise to him this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy. We bless you, name of Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify your mighty name, O Lord. We want to invite Brother Dick to come at this time to open our prayer. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Good morning. I want to say thank you, Lord, this morning for the ambience. Woman of the service, oh God, has been so inspiring, oh Father, so kind to that. I pray, oh Father, this morning, oh God, as I come before thee, lift up thy holy name, oh Jesus, the Almighty, the Jehovah Jireh, the everlasting Father, the Kings of Kings, the Lord of Lords. No, Father, as we lift up thy name this morning, dear Jesus, let me not stand here, oh God. And just, just to be just to be heard by the listening public or those that are in the diaspora, diaspora, sorry. But I pray, Father, that thou would give me the courage and the understanding and the knowledge, knowledge to move on, oh God. This is not this is the first time for me at this at this podium. Not that I'm frightened, but I have to take my time because it's the way God wants it to be, you know. And prayer is speaking to Almighty God. So, God, listen to my prayer this morning. Oh, Father, I pray, oh God, this morning for the sick and the suffering. I pray, oh, Father, that those who are in the hospitals, at this time, that may, they may receive some comfort, oh God, from thee.
For there are some people who are not even alive, who do not live to see it this morning. So I pray, O oh God, that they would be comforted. This morning, O oh Father, I lift our congregation in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh Father, that we'll multiply. For it seems, O oh God, that there's some declining in our, our population. Or in, and I pray, O oh Father, that thou may look and see and help us, O oh Father, to recover from this downward trend. O oh God, have mercy upon us. Thou knowest all. Thou knowest all. We know nothing. We are to come and ask thee for your assistance. Bless us in a special way, O oh Father. Lord, this morning I bring before thee the poor. The poor in spirit, physically, mentally, socially. O oh God. Father, thou know. Each and every one who are not born to be or to have it financially. But I know where, where I came from, oh God. From very poor, humble beginnings. Lord, thou knowest what some of these people may not know, or most of them, or all of them may not know. But when I was born and grew up in the few, the first few years of my life, it was in a grass house. Grass house with water and dark. And I could remember during those times, my mother praying every morning. My mother praying and asking God for guidance and protection over our family. And I remember her praying also that when we go into school, that we may learn well. And we become something of substance. And I thank thee, O oh God, for what thou hast done for us. Thou hast seen us move, O oh God, from the bottom of the bottomless pit. And we have climbed the ladder. And thank thee, for, O oh God, for where we are today. That we can give praise. She was able to educate us to the best of our ability. And we, O oh Father, as we move on in life, and God blessed us. I was able to do the best for my family also. So I thank the O oh God for my wife this morning, who always be at my side, who always helping me. And thank the O oh God for where we have reached today after 40 plus years together. Thank the O oh God. May thou have the glory. This morning, O oh Father, I pray for the church board. I pray, O oh Father, that I may think, O oh God, properly. I pray, O oh Father, that they may raise the bar. And I pray, O oh Father, that things would be different. Thank thee, O oh God, for your pastor of this church and his wife, the deacons, the man, the, those that play the instruments. May them, O oh God, have the courage to play, to play to the best of their ability. You worship leaders, O oh Father. Let it be electrifying this morning. Let, be, let it be a morning of a difference. And I mean it from the depths of my heart. Have thine own way today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take a seat. Turn to your right, your left, and just say something nice, smile something to your neighbor. Neighbor. Nice to see you in church this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome those of you who are on, on our platform, Facebook and YouTube. Those who are joining us this morning, we are coming to you live from the Glad Tidings Tabernacle Church, a member church of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. And we are so able and glad to have as our shepherd, our head of this church, the Bishop Sonny E. Williams and Minister Maureen Williams. Give you the, could you just give them a hand this morning? Thank you. Thank you, wonderful people, for the years of service in this part. And we continue to love you and we continue to support you. And those who are on the platform, we pray that you will enjoy this service, the ministry from this church this morning. 
that our prayer that God will reach and touch you wherever you are. Birthday celebration. Celebrating a birthday from today right up to Saturday. Could you please stand? Tomorrow. Anybody else birthday? All right, and I'm today. So happy birthday to all of us who are celebrating today. The goodness of God continue to be with us. What about a wedding anniversary from today right up to Saturday? All right. What about those of us who are celebrating life? You're celebrating life this morning? Amen. If you're celebrating life, just stand on your feet and give God some praise. I'm going to dance and praise him. I don't care what happened. I don't care what goes through. This morning, just dance and give God praise because God is good. God is good. And all the time, yeah. praise God. Check, one, two, check. I'm going to dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name. Let's take it from the top again. I'm going to dance, dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus.
the creator of the universe. Our oh God is able this morning. Creator of the universe. What can you do? What can you do?
just big O, you are not just large O, but you are a great God. Who are doing this morning? You are God, you are not just big O, you are not just large O, you are a great God. You are God, you are God.
God. He is big and he is large. Hallelujah. We take this morning tithes and offering as we do the song. God is a good God. He is a great God. Hallelujah. Sorry, sorry. At this time, let me call on the bishop. Okay, as we, as we just pray, we sing in for a moment of reflection. And we put into context what we would be doing in a while in the giving. So that I could bless givers this morning. Certainly God is a big, great God. And those adjectives are just basic. He is indescribable. Amen. Amen. Human language and vocabulary would always be inadequate to describe this phenomenal God. And so hear what the Apostle Paul says to us from 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. And I read it from the message. He says, You are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it all away for us. In one stroke, he became poor that we might become rich. What a benevolent God. Such generosity is unbeaten. Unbeaten. Which are you give away everything? Do you? Any one of us has such generosity? You give away all your clothes? You give away all your money? You give away all your land? No. That's the God we serve. And so, Father... We pray to their God for every generous spirit who has the faith to trust you with their substance. And we pray, Father, today as they release their substance in faith, O oh God, we pray that heaven will respond. O oh God, in showers of blessings on every giver, we pronounce you blessed. Blessed in your going and in your coming. Blessed in the village and in the city. Blessed when you study. Blessed when you, you play. Blessed when you operate business. Blessed in your family. O oh God. Thank you for your blessings now upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give. Hallelujah. May come forth. God is a good God. He is a great God. God is a good God. He is a great God.
God is a good God. God is a good God. He is a great God. When the enemy, when the enemy comes against me, Lord is We uphold. He's my buckler. Sheer and tower. There's no great. Lord, Lord, we are believing you for souls. 
We are believing the, the grounds already for tides, oh God, and ready to harvest. Father, help us as a church as we go, God, not just go to look pretty. Oh God, not just go because of a crusade, because God, you have sent us, you have commanded us, and we are grateful. We thank you this morning for doing a great work. We thank you for souls. We thank you for men and women that will be delivered and set free this morning. In the name of Jesus, she Jesus, you are Lord, you God, you are Lord. You are Lord. Christians arise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, there is a work for us to do. God, there is things for us to do, oh God, to win souls. And we thank you, oh God, that we we are the one, oh God, that will help. We are the one by the Holy Spirit, oh God, that will use us, oh God, to transform the land, the community in the mighty name of Jesus. God, there are souls that are going to a lost eternity. There are people that are dying in their sins. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, set them free. Set our children free. Set our young people free. Set our mothers free. Set our fathers free. Set our brothers and sisters free. We break every bondage in the name of Jesus. Break bondage over belay. Break bondage over the community. Break bondage and invent any greater deeds in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you this morning. Oh God, for your Christ and Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pull along, we destroy every walk of darkness. In the name of Jesus, loose a hold over your people, every chain in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, we call upon your name. We call upon heaven in the name of Jesus. Loose heaven today, oh God. Let your angels come down and invade this community, invade our home, invade and invade and the greater things this morning. God, we claim to invade it for you today. In the name of Jesus, we look. It doesn't matter what is happening. It doesn't matter what the enemy say. God, we know that you have given us the power. We have given us the power. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. In the name of Jesus this morning. Father, not my way, but let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Hallelujah. Jesus, it is done, it is done, let the will of the Lord be done, it is done church, amen, do we believe that, do we really believe that, we have to believe, to believe, it is done, we're claiming sugar corner, top belay, bottom belay and the surrounding area for Jesus Christ. We're calling backsliders. We're calling unsaved. Calling them back to the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may have a seat for a bit. Hallelujah. We're going to open for testimonies. You have a burning testimony that you want to share.
two testimonies that you want to share what God has done for you. Could you do that quickly for us this morning, if anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. My name is Crispin Charles, living at Bel Air. And I stand here this morning to just share with you of the goodness of the Lord. I really remember over a year, not last year, Christmas, but the one before, I did, you know, take sick. And the doctors really put me on a two weeks ban of driving. And apart from that, I would have gone through some challenge, many um, health issues. And one of the things I really learned from that illness is to trust in God. Because I will tell you something. There were times when... I, I really could not have moved my right foot. A lot of you might know that, but God is good. I, I, I take the old airport as my ground of exercise. I still go when I have the time. But I'm saying this to say to you today, God has really healed heal me from a lot of things. One of the things that happened to me, my blood sugar went sky high. I don't have no relative with that. But I think from the intake that I personally would have taken into my system would have spiked. But one of the things I learned to do is to trust in God. I went to the doctor last year, April, and they put me on met for and I went home and I took it for a week and you know one morning I said wait but it's God I trust in him and I have a little bim in my bedroom and I went and I pressed the thing man and I said man I'll go out of my system I threw them away and I trust in God and I, I embark and trusting in God for progress and I see from that time God has really brought me a long way Help me to stay up and to stay with my blood sugar, you know, keeping on a certain level. And brethren, I'm just testifying this morning to say to you, let us keep on trusting in God. Regardless to what thing might happen to you. I mean, our pastor preached Sunday after Sunday. And one of the things that I learned is to wait upon the Lord. Because sometimes, I never know where to come in this morning and share this with you. But God is so good. He uses us to let others know of his goodness. And out of that, I'm standing here this morning. And I'm rejoicing for the goodness where you have brought me from. So I just want to say to you this morning, keep on trusting in God. Believing in God. Don't get too shaky. Don't make anything shake you. But one thing you have to remember, you serve a God that can heal, that can deliver you, that can provide for you. And he's been doing that for me. And he can do the same thing for you. God is good. Thank you very much. Yes, I too want to share about the goodness of God. You know, can I sit down there and hear about testimony? I love to testify about God. You know, I, I have some cane home, there's some lobster cane. I never sell none. I want to speak about giving this morning again. I never sell none. People will come and ask for that. But on the trip out to South Rivers, I said, man, let me cut some of these cane and carry it out there. So I cut a sack and I take it out there to give the guys. But two days after, a guy came and want a couple sack to buy. You know? And calling me again and say, man, 
call me yesterday and say, I want some more. And I never sell none. So you see, giving, I, I learn about giving. You see, that is a, I didn't carry it out there to say, well, somebody going to come back and buy because I didn't look into sell. But I just take them out and say, the brother, we're going to get a piece of cake to eat and, and so on like that. After that, is a guy came for two sacks and he called in again. So I learned something about giving, you know. And I want to encourage us, brethren. If God value a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus, if you give a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus, you'll have treasures in heaven. Think about your sacrifice. After you may got a bill to pay, you, may, you know, and, and different things. And you really want it to pay. But let me trust God now. He said, trust in him with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. You know, I, I, last night I was reading in John 14. And he showed me how important this is. It is to really connect to God and to really walk in the spirit. Because he showed me that Philip and them was around Jesus Christ. And still didn't know the father. Jesus Christ had to explain to them what the, he said, man, if you see me, you see the father. So long have you been with me and don't know the father. If you see me, you see the Father. And he showed me, if you keep his commandment, my Father will love you. And Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God will come and make an abode with us. When them three, they were making an abode. Oh, tell me, who could break through that? Who could break through that? Is we does allow the devil to mess us up, you know, and give us sickness and all kind of thing. When the three abode with us, but we are more than conqerors. So I just want to leave that with us this morning. Good morning, church. God is good. My testimony might be a little thing, but just give me some time. You know, last year I went, I was getting some problems with my eyes. And it was like when rain fall on a dashboard of a car, and then afterwards you see the water settle on it and things like that. So I start seeing that in my eyes, like, spots and what thing like water so I went to the doctor and I explained and tell him and he told me that he did some tests and I should go and do go down and see the doctor down in Trinidad but for some reason I didn't go at the time because we were planning to go to Dubai and we had already paid our ticket and everything was in place so we couldn't go at that time but we went in I went back to him in November, and he said to me, you should have done gone down to Trinidad like yesterday, because the eye is deteriorating, and you should have done gone. Well, anyway, we went down there, my husband and I, we went, and we saw the surgeon, and he, he clarified what this other doctor in St. Vincent said, and he said, I will have to do surgery. So anyway, we go to Dubai, and then we come back, and we visit him again, and he said the same thing. But he said to me, the doctor where I had to go to and do the surgery, he has um, surgery from January right up to June. So it will be kind of difficult. But he said, the doctor is his friend, so he will put in a word for me and see what he can do. So he did that, and then... One day in January, we were home, and we got a call saying immediately that I should go down to Trinidad. So I gave my husband and I, we went down, and we saw the doctor, and he scheduled the surgery. And brother, and I tell you, I don't like to describe what I went through. I didn't say, well, he didn't put, the, put me to sleep, but the amount of injection that I got in this eye here, Oh, God, I tell you, it wasn't easy. But when he did for the surgery come now, he said to me, they put me on this in the theater and covered on my face. He said, you're claustrophobic? I said, no. So he, he just covered this one, and this, this one was left open. And I tell you, I felt everything. It's not literally the pain, but what he was using, the instrument and everything, I could feel him squeezing and he pulling out. I tell you, it wasn't easy. But thank God, he helped me. And I came back and 
Yesterday I went back to my doctor here for, for a checkup on the eye. And he said, what he's seeing, it's improving. And I want to thank God for what he has done in my life. Though it wasn't easy, he has seen me too. And I know that he is going to see me too completely. You know, I had to do some more tests again. But he said what he's saying, he's pleased with it. And I am getting there by the grace of God. So I just want to thank you. Thank God. Thank for all who prayed for me. Thanks for your encouragement. And I just want to give God all the praise. Hallelujah. He has done it. And he can do it again. Hallelujah. I thank God for helping me in my schoolwork this year, and I thank God for helping me in everything I do. I thank him for everything he has done for me in my life, and that's why I thank God for my mother and my father and my whole entire family, and I love God very much. Give her a big hand. God is good. Hallelujah. Little one shall lead us. At this time, we have our scripture reading. Please, could you at this time turn to your Bible, your laptop, your phone, your tablets, wherever you have that Bible up on. John 10, 10 to 18, and we're going to invite Sister Paige Williams. morning church please stand for the reading the scripture reading is taken from john chapter 10 verses 10 to 18 here begin it the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy i have come that they may have life and have it to the full i am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep so when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me, I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is because I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. Here in the scripture reading. Hallelujah. So at this time, we're going to just quickly ask our children to join to the children's church upstairs, teachers and children's church. While they're doing that, let me just quickly, um, all altar ministers, your, your duty begins tonight. So we need you at the crusade for the three nights of crusade. So all altar workers please don't forget that and um quickly um for the closing of gospel fest the tickets brother leon have the tickets glad tidings have a special price um it's twenty dollars but glad tidings price is ten half ten minutes so you can check um brother leon all right this time um we're gonna prepare our hearts for the word and to minister the word this morning is Dr. Nell L. Richardson is a Dane pastor, motivational speaker, counselor, life coach, and self-advocate. She recently received a certificate from Cornell University in Women in Leadership, Navigating the Double Mind Blind. Congratulations. As a motivational speaker, Dr. Nell addressed disability and racism. She was a key speaker for the UN 2021 Forum 
about it. Come back up here. And I told, and a very strong woman of God. So at this time, please receive Dr. Nell Williams as she come to minister the word for us this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. I just want to give God a mighty praise this morning. Come on, fresh. See, I was about to say, come on, fresh anointing, but I'm here at Glad Tidings Tabernacle. Hello? So I just want to say a pleasant good morning to you. Uh, let's give uh, honor where honor is due. First of all, we just give God honor and glory to be back home once more. To be in this house, in Jesus' name. And uh, let's honor our bishop and uh, First Lady Maureen this morning. Come on, give them a big round of applause this morning. Because God has been so good for them to be. I mean, I grew up in this church. <laughs> and for this man and his wife to be here, it's an honor. And a, a, you don't understand. Like, I'm coming from a place where... You know, uh, Christianity seems these days that like it's no longer valid. And so you have to appreciate him. You have to appreciate First Lady Williams. You have to appreciate the, the ministers and pastors and, and evangelists and all the people in this church. We say a pleasant good morning to Pastor Gary this morning and his family. And all of the ministers of this house. And to you, to you the worshipers this morning. You know, this is really all about you, giving honor and glory to God. Amen? So I bring greetings from Fresh Anointing International and to all the people in, di in the diaspora this morning. I just want to welcome each and every one of you this morning, giving God praise, honor, and glory. It's a privilege to be here. I don't take this kind of platform for granted. This is not about me this morning. All the accolades, we're going to put those to the side because this morning, I want you to be delivered. I want you to get something. I want you to have an encounter with God today. And this is why I'm here. So I want you to give yourselves a big round of applause this morning just for being here in God's house, to hear his word this morning. And I want you to open up your hearts because, you know, since I've been here, people have been saying, I think God, first of all, before I even go there, I want you to know, usually I don't be here around Easter time. You know, my, because, you know, it's so busy in the church. But God has been just speaking to my heart and saying, you know, I have a client that says, I don't know, I want to come to St. Vincent. And so I said, you know what, uh, let me take you because I don't want you passing out on me. So I said, okay. Well, all that I have to do, let me put it aside. And so the Lord brought me here. I'm not here of my own accord this morning. So I don't want you to look at me and all the accolades you have heard. But I want you to open up your hearts this morning. I want you to open up your minds. I want you to trust God because there is a word for you this morning. I started saying, since I'm here in St. Vincent, lives. God, I've been saving lives. And people have been saying, I don't think God's, I don't think you came here just for being here. I think God sent you here. So I know God sent me here this morning because he have a word for you. Maybe you've been praying. Maybe you've been asking God. And so I want you to just open up your heart this morning. I'm just going to give you a mild message this morning. One that I want to resonate with you. One that I want you to open up your heart to receive this morning. And my topic today is silencing the powerful voice of the enemy. You know, since I've been here, as I said, people have been coming up and saying, I've been going to the doctor. I've been taking all these tests. I've been going here, going there, spending all my money, doing all of this stuff. And yet here I am, sick. Here I am, no results. 
here I am wondering, God, what is going on with my life? You know, I had to go there to the doctor since I've been here, you know, because, you know, the reports are coming back that says you're fine. And when you look at your lives, you're not fine. Amen. Come on, let me hear you this morning. When you look at your lives this morning, can you tell me you're fine? And so the devil has been speaking in your ear and telling you, oh, you, you know, this is going to happen. And he shows sickness and he says, that's going to happen. But I want you to know this morning that you are serving a God that cannot fail you this morning. And so I want you to silence that voice in your head this morning. The voice of the enemy that is telling you things that you know God did not tell you this morning. The things that you know God didn't say to you this morning. So when you go to the doctor and you get that report, don't just come home and say, well, the doctor says I'm okay, so I must be okay. I, wanna, I have news for you this morning. I want you this morning to silence the voice of the enemy in your lives, in your families this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. John 10.10 10 says, you know, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. And so I want to speak to you this morning, you know, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But guess what? There's a God. That's why Jesus came. Why did he, came? Why did he come? You know, if, if we have to be living in sickness and poverty and death and frustration, then Jesus would have, you know, sacrificed his life for nothing. You know, we just had the resurrection. Why would Jesus have gone through the suffering, the pain, the spit in his face, the beat him? I mean, where were you this morning? The beatings, the insults, where were you this morning? Jesus would have suffered it all in vain this morning. So that enemy, he comes to steal your joy. And so when the Lord have blessed you with, with a promise, let, 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 me, let me just share this with you. you know, when Jesus blessed you with a promise, don't just hold on to it and sit on it. Listen, you got to pray. You got to get on your knees and you got to pray on that promise. You got to tell God, you know, you have released this promise to me. And you got to silence the air of the devil that says, you know, that promise is not going to come to pass in your life. In the life of your family, in your marriage, in your lives of your children, in the church. In the church, look, we, you know, these days we're seeing empty seats. People are no longer trusting God. Because they're not seeing results this morning. And so they get frustrated and they walk away from the church forgetting that there is an advocate. And he's speaking in your ear telling you, oh, that pastor, he don't know what he's talking about. He's not helping me. Oh, look at that sister. Look at that brother. Every time I come to church, you know, look at the hypocrites up here. But listen, you're not serving the people here. We come together in one accord so we can honor God on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We come together in one accord that when you have read your Bible, when you have prayed all week, when you come to church, this place should be on fire for God. Hallelujah. Come and put your hands together for Jesus. This place should be on fire for God. Don't come draining the, the bishop this morning. When you come, you should be the oil that anoints him, that gives him the help. Don't come to him expecting him to pour out everything. Then he'll be dry. Don't, don't wait for the pastors and the musician to get you ready. You got to be coming to church ready. Hallelujah. You got to come to this altar ready. Hallelujah. You got to silence those voices that says, that here I am, God. I am sick. I've been trying. Hallelujah. When you come in this altar, you're coming to, to get results in the name of Jesus. But your chains must be broken. Hallelujah. Chains must be broken. You don't come expecting from the bishop. You don't come expecting from the pastors. You bring something to the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said the enemy comes to kill. He will kill your joy. He will kill anything good that the Lord has released in your life if you're not careful. Hallelujah this morning. If you sit down in the bed at night and you go to sleep in, on Facebook and Instagram and you're watching TV and you refuse to pray in the promise God has released for you, guess what? The devil will come in and he will speak in your ear and he will tell you that you're not worthy. And he's going to tell you, yeah, 
God gave you that promise, but let me tell you, here I am. I will take it from you. So let me tell you this morning, if you want victory in your life, you better stand firm in the word of God. You better pray. You better pray. You better pray. I, I tell you this morning to, for that promise to be fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. The, the enemy comes to see you. Your confidence this morning. You lose your confidence when you lose Christ and the power that, you know, the, the Bible says that, you know, Jesus, when he left, he gave us power to tread on those serpents. And so you lose your confidence when, when you know, the devil is beaten down. And you can imagine you go to the doctor and they tell you you're okay and you come home and you know you're not okay, you're not feeling fine. And then when you look around, you're saying, God, look, I'm still sick. What kind of God am I serving? Then you, you don't want to trust God anymore. You lose your confidence when you look around at your bank account and you see it's empty. You, look, you lose your confidence when you see your children and they're not doing so well like the other kids around the block. And you wonder, what happened to my kids, God? Now you start fussing with your neighbor and you start fussing with the ones who's doing well instead of praying for them and saying, God, look, I know you're the same God I serve. And so I know if you can bless this one. And I know if you can bless that one. Well, here is mine. I'm in your house each and every week. Hallelujah. And I know God. You're God that never changed. You're God that never failed. And so I know God. I put my child before this altar. And I, I, I'm not going to give up until I see change. Change must come. In Jesus' name, you got to silence those voices that come upon you. That make you lose your confidence this morning. Hallelujah. The, the thief will come to steal your peace. Mm. Let me take a survey this morning of every home out here in these villages. Belair, Gomez, Daphne, uh, Fountain, wherever you may reside, Honestville. Can you tell me there is absolute peace in your home? I can't hear you. <laughs> is there absolute peace in your home? I mean, some of you probably left home this morning fighting already fighting before you left all week. Your, your, your home was in turmoil. War in the house. And you're wondering, God, what is going on in my home? God, don't you reside here in my home? God, what is going on? I can't take it anymore, God. I'm tired. I need you to show up, God. I need you to silence these voices, oh God, that comes, God, to interrupt my peace in my home. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Let me hear you this morning. Don't sit around and take and listen to the voices of the enemy that comes to tell you there cannot be peace in your home. God is a God of peace. Hallelujah. He's a God of rest. He's a God of tranquility. But you... He's believing and waiting on you to trust him. He's waiting on you to reach out to him. And listen, don't think I don't know that many of you have been praying, you know. But you know what I realized last night? I was talking to somebody. So many of us are praying, but we're not believing. We're praying, but we're not believing. And so when we ask the Lord God, you know, send me the peace. And he sends it. And it comes. Now you look at it and say, what's that? What's that? Right? You don't believe. You don't want to accept that the peace can look like that. You don't want to accept the joy can look like that. You don't want to accept that tranquility can look like that. And, and, and there is something, you know, where when people are being abused over and over and over again, they start to accept things as they are. But could it be that things doesn't have to be the way they are? Could it be that there will be change when you leave this place today? Could it be that God will show up and God will bring peace to your house? Could it be? I can see the look on your faces and, and you, I mean, you're on the brink of tears right now. But I bring peace to you this morning. I bring God's love to you this morning. Some of you never even heard the word love. You don't know what that means. Husband and wife living in a home. You never get a hug. You never get a kiss. He never tells you how precious you are. He never tells you you're beautiful. And vice versa. Is that love? Is that love, ladies and gentlemen? 
Husbands, is that love? Wives, is that love? You know, when your husband comes to the house and all you can think is that when he walks in the door, you start fussing. All the negative things you can find, but never anything positive that you can, you can encourage your spouse with. I want you to change that around this morning. I want you to silence the voice of the enemy when he walks in that door. Hallelujah. I want you to change that. I want you to start, you know, embracing your spouse. Embrace your children. Embrace your grandchildren. Tell them something nice. Tell them something positive that can uplift their lives. But every time they walk in the door, what, what, what are you doing here? Like I, was, I was there all day yesterday helping my niece to fix the car. And then the car needs one little thing. And the car is moving. But then she says, all oh, this money me spend. And all the time, and this car still not moving. <laughs> and so I said to her, oh, no, no, no. Okay, you see, this is where you're wrong. Because you see, this car was sitting here for how long now? Months. It wasn't moving. Now it's moving. So you don't come and you don't come now and and, and now say, oh, this are the, not, still not move. No, 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 no. You give God thanks for the small victories that was won. Give God thanks and praise for the small victories because it's in those small victories that the big victories will come. But if you're living a life of ingratitude, then God ain't going to be blessing you, honey. He is not going to even be looking at your way because he's saying, look, look at all the things I've done for, for, for him or her. And they don't give me praise. They don't even say thank you. But now they're just finding negative things to say about, to talk about, and all of that. So I want you to silence those voices as they come at you this morning. Silence them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because the enemy comes to take your peace. He comes to take your families. How many of you in this sanctuary are divorced today? How many are separated? How many are still on the verge now of getting separated or divorced? There's hope for you this morning. You got to silence those voices of the enemy when he comes up in your family. Let me tell you, you got you to create an altar this morning. An altar of worship, an altar of praise unto God. You know, you got to wake up 12 a.m. You know, you got to make the sacrifice this morning. 12 a.m., you get up and you say, God, I'm putting my family at the altar. God, you have blessed me with this husband. You have blessed me with this wife. You have blessed me with this spouse. I'm putting this spouse on the altar. And I'm not giving up and saying, I see change. Let me tell you something. You know how many families, not me, but God have restored just from what I'm saying. Look, I, I, I'm an advocate. I'm a life coach and counselor, and I can tell you the countless of people on the verge of divorce, and then they will walk into my office and say, you know, Dr. Richardson, you know, I, th there is no hope. And I said, no. Mm -mm. We can change that around because you know what? There is a, God is a God of hope. His name is Jesus. And many of those families, I remember a quick example. One young man would be bringing his wife into his, this young woman into his wife's bedroom. And she's sitting there and can do nothing. And I said, no. So no, now I said, I'm not even dealing with the wife anymore. I want to deal with you. Let me deal with you husbands this morning who disrespect your wives who disrespect the relationship, the woman God has put into your lives. And then you go out and you do the things that you think that you, because you're a man, ought to do. But God said that you are the head of this woman. You are the head of your home. And so if you can't respect your home, you can't going to respect God. And then you want to come in the sanctuary and expect to find results. You got to silence those voices of the enemy that says, you know, I'm a man. I'm going to do what I want to do. And you got to trust God to let God do what he needs to do in your lives and in your home this morning. And so I want to speak to you wives also. Because this is not a one-way street. You know, you wives that think that God is not watching. And you have your, your husbands at home. And you know, you have to silence those voices 
that whispers in your ear to tell you that, oh, nobody's going to find out. Hallelujah. Look, I, I just had someone who came to me and says, look, you, you got to talk to this woman. I tell you, God is watching you. You got to respect yourself. If you don't respect yourself enough, respect God, respect your marriage, respect the bond that God has placed in your life. There's too many divorces today. There's too many, you know, fights. You know, people are getting in all kinds of domestic violence fights and all of that of things that can be avoided. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Things that can be avoided if you only would have a little respect for the bond that God has created for you. Respect yourself. Respect your body. Respect your home. You know, you, you, you know God has blessed you with a, a, a wonderful husband. He may not be everything, but you're going out and you're sleeping around and doing all of these things. And thank God is not watching. Silence those voices when they come at you in Jesus' name. Tell the devil, look, God have blessed me with a home. I have a wonderful husband, and he may not be everything. I have a wonderful wife. She may not be everything, but I know that she's the best one God have placed into my life. I'm going to love her. I'm going to love him. I'm going to respect, and I'm going to trust God and honor God in my marriage. Hallelujah. Come and put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. God is a God that cannot ever fail. The enemy will come to kill your spirit. And when he sees you happy and smiling, <laughs> look at you. Oh, you know, like in New York, you know, when people win the lottery, man, they have the biggest smiles on their face. Woo! And so, <laughs> when, when the Lord gives you a small victory, sometimes it's small. And we walk around and we're bragging and we're boasting and we, oh, you know, look, look what I, I got a new car and look, I got a new this and I got that. And I, and the devil is waiting there saying, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm waiting for you patiently. I'm waiting for you patiently. And if you don't trust God, you know, uh, you don't take the time to anoint that car. Ask the Lord to cover it as you get on that road. You know, you give thanks for it. Same thing with your salaries. I mean, how many of you are working and when, you, when, when, when the, I don't know, the month or the week comes, you, you, you can't see what you're working for. You don't pay your tithes. You don't trust God with, you know, what needs to be his. And yet you're praying. And you're saying, God, you know, I don't know, I'm working. Look, my paycheck is here and you can't see where your money is going. Because Why? The advocate comes up and eats up everything. Because guess what? You're going to have a leaky roof. The child comes come and says, oh, mommy, I need, I don't know, lessons. Or somebody else is coming to say, I'm sick. Now you need to spend out all that money. The car is going to break down. You got to spend money for a mechanic. And so before you know it, you have no money left. You have nothing in the bank. But when you trust God, with even the minute part of what he gives to you, it is multiplied. Amen? It is multiplied. And I'm not here telling you because I'm from America. I was born right, right here in this community. I grew up in this church. So I'm one of you that's been only trusting God for my life and asking him to lead me, Lord, in the ways that you need to lead me. And when the devil comes in like a flood, because he does, I said to him, in the name of Jesus, I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you got to tell him, I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child of God. And so when you're a child of God, you act like you're a child of God. When you're a child of God, you don't go around crying and every little thing that, you know, you're, you're just crying, you refuse to pray. Look, some people think they want to pray for a minute or two and then, you know, all the results will come. I got news for you. The Bible says you got to pray without ceasing. That means you have to be constantly in prayer because look, now today you're going to pray.
pray and you get a breakthrough, but tomorrow, the devil, you know, he doesn't just go to the abyss. No, he's, he come out of the house and he's waiting outside. He's waiting outside just for you. Or if he can't get you, he's waiting for your child. If he can't get you, your child, your husband who's not serving, he's waiting for him. And guess what? If, if your husband not serving, your wife not serving, that child is not serving, they're the weaker link. But the Bible says that they have to be covered through you who is the child of God. And so that if you're not ready, if you're not empowered, then look, you need to put up your own umbrella first. Because you can't cover anybody if, you, if you're weak and if you don't have an umbrella for yourself. Amen. So you got to silence those voices of the enemy when, it, when he comes in like a flood to eat up all that you have. To eat up your children. You know, everything is coming at you at the same time. Are you there? Everything comes in at you at the same time. And so you're losing hope in God. People are walking away from the church saying, this God isn't serving me anymore. I'm not seeing any results. But it's not God that is not serving you. Because look, God can't pour into a, a dirty vessel. You know, one foot in uh, the world and the, the, the next foot you want to come in the church. and pour into an empty vessel. He needs a clean vessel. If you have, you know, your bottle of water and it's full, how do you expect to get more in it? So that bottle has to be emptied and washed and make sure it's purified before God can pour into it. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that bottle is purified, when that body is purified and cleansed, now the Holy Spirit comes in like a flood and he lifts up a standard against the enemy and he pours into you. Hallelujah. And that no weapon that is formed against you can prosper in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against your home. No weapon formed against your children. No weapon formed against your job. Your business can prosper in the name of Jesus. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but you will always come back. Amen. God will always make a way for you. Because his promise is not that he will move those things, but the word of God says that he will be in it with you. And so if the devil want to come to, 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 to give you all these words of negativity, then he have to come through Christ. He have to come to Jesus. Amen. And he's not going to do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I want to just encourage you this morning that you got to silence his enemy, that this enemy. And how do you do that? You do that by prayer. You do that by supplication unto God. You do that by refusing to walk out of the church. You do that. That church is, has to be in here. Not glad tidings tabernacle and the pews. It has to start in your heart. And that, don't, that, that means that you got to stay with God. Not out there looking at, I don't know, whatever you serve, and then you want to stay with God on Sunday. doesn't work. It doesn't work. And then you want to say that God is not helping you. You want to say that God is not there for you. God is here. The word of God is true and is sharp like a two-edged sword, it piercing asunder anything that could come at you. Amen? Hallelujah. So the enemy will come to destroy everything that you have worked your entire life for if you're not careful. And you work so hard on a daily basis, you know, working on your marriage, right? Working on your husband, working on your wife, working on your children, you know? And then all of a sudden, the enemy speaks into somebody's ear that says, See that woman? See that house? I want you to go and destroy it. And so here you are. You put on your nice little tight outfit and you fix your hair. And now you know that man is married, but <laughs> oh, oh, look at me. No. The devil is a liar. The devil, I said the devil is a liar. When that family have worked so hard, you haven't seen the sacrifices that they have made. You haven't seen the, the nights they have been praying. You haven't seen the tears that they have been crying. But then the, de the devil is speaking in your ear. And you go and you willfully will destroy that relationship, that marriage, that household, knowing that it's wrong. It's the wrong thing to do. 
And then you think God is not watching. You said nobody would know. So you do the footsie under the table and think, oh, there's a tablecloth that covers. Nobody know. The devil is a liar. And he's a thief. And so you got to silence those voices when they come at you in Jesus' name. Because let me tell you, if those tables were turned, you wouldn't like that woman or that man to do that to your home and to your life and to your kids. Those little kids who, when this relationship is mashed up, they suffer. They have to struggle. And you don't take a minute to think about that. And some of you just don't care. I don't care because, look, I had one client that said to me, well, somebody mashed up my home, so she didn't care. She did not care. And some of you are walking around with diseases also. And you know it. And then you will go into that home and you will give that disease and you know there is no cure. She says to me, I didn't care because somebody gave it to me. So I'm going to do what I got to do. And so it, it's only through counseling, only through counseling, through Jesus, that God can help you to re you renew your mind. To silence the voice of the enemy when the enemy comes, you know, in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord needs to lift up a standard against that enemy and said no. And stop that. So you can have your peace and you can have your joy and your children can live in blessings and prosperity. And they can fulfill their lives and destinies in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. I want to tell you this morning. It's not without hope. That's why Jesus came. The devil, yes, is strong, but Jesus is stronger. Hallelujah. I said the devil is strong, but Jesus is stronger. And his blood, his covering will cover us always in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So when we've been given a promise of abundant life through our faith in Jesus Christ, then we have victory. We have victory. We're not hopeless. We're not out there to the, to the whims of the enemy. Yeah, they're going to come. But listen, you put on the whole armor of God. And you put your, you know, uh, th there is in the book of Revelation, it says it's only not that you cover yourself and your spouse, but you cover everything that is connected to you. That means your children. That means your job. It means your money. It means your spirituality. It means your prayer life. Because some people don't think that, you know, the, the, they think those are mineral things, but your prayer life, your spirituality, your anointing, the gifts that God has given to you, the destiny of your children and yourself, all of those things, you make sure you cover them in Jesus' blood each and every day. So when the enemy comes in, he has to go in there to find them. He's not going to go there. So, you, you, you know, you can be at peace. You don't have to be fighting all the time. You don't have to be fighting all the time because God is fighting your battles for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, we're confronted with so many negative voices each and every day. And I don't understand. Uh, we're going through so much. And if you want to encourage, especially, I'm not picking on you, gentlemen, but especially the men in Africa, the men in the Caribbean, They'll be going through so much. And then you said, look, you need to come into counseling. They say, me, I, I'm a man. Man don't need counseling. And then it's only when they're hitting a crisis moment, then they're coming on their knees. Don't wait for that moment when everything is being destroyed. If you know that God is sending help for you, please accept that God is sending you help so your families and your own lives can be restored. Don't wait until that moment when nothing can be done. When it's gone too far and now you're saying God is not helping you. He's sending you help right now. At the soft sound of my voice, God is sending you to that help and saying, you know, you got to silence those voices that are coming at you. We, too many negative uh, voices we're listening to and it's really messing up our lives. You know, we are conf uh, confronted every day with destructive voices and our faith is being undermined. And so we leave the church. That's the first thing we do. Because that sister, she's a hypocrite, so I ain't coming back. That pastor, I don't know what he preaching, I ain't coming back. We leave the church, but guess what?
Listen, I do deliverance ministry, and in deliverance, the enemy singles you out. When he wants to destroy you, he singles you out. And when he singles you out, then it's his moment, because guess what? There's no, there's no bishop to call. There is no uh, a woman of God to call. There's no minister to call, because guess what? You done left in a bad way, cursing everybody out. You know, you don't need that. I don't need that. And now you're, you're there now by yourself. And the enemy is making a devastating blow at you. And then when you get to that point now, you're saying, my God, what do I do? There's nothing you can do at that point. But come back to God. Ask repentance. Ask him to wash you in his blood and accept you again because he's a mighty God. And he's a God that will always love you and always care for you. But you got to come back. You got to humble yourself. And you're gonna come, you have to come back to his grace. Amen. Hallelujah. So our sense of hope, when all of that happened, diminishes. We lose our hope. And now you see so many young people on the streets just smoking and drinking their lives away. You talk to them and, and you realize, you know, sometimes it's just a little problem. And they can't solve it so... They don't have anybody to talk to. And now they resort to the bottle. They resort to marijuana. They resort, resort to all kind of stuff. And we see so many of our young people just, just <sighs> lives and destinies just on the street in the, in the, in the rum shops and, and, and just walking aimlessly. What if we can silence the voice of the enemy that says that you're better than that? What if one of us in this church this morning can reach out to one of those people to give some hope and encouragement to them and to tell them there is hope in God. Because sometimes they just don't have anybody to talk to. And I'm talking about the rum shop. Let me come back to the church right here in your pews where you're sitting this morning. How heavy is your heart while I'm speaking these things? You know, you've been saying, my God, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm crying every day. My heart is sad every day. Every day, God. What am I going to do? But there's hope for you this morning that God is saying that you have to come back to his throne. His grace is sufficient for you. You're more than enough this morning. You don't have to go out there looking for anything else or anybody else. God is more than enough for you. He has given you everything here that you need. But some of us are always looking out, out for, for outside influences. We think it's better out there. Like, you know, they have the phrase that says the grass is green on the other side. When we have enough green grass that we cut them down every, every week and we can't see it. Well, I pray this morning that God will open your eyes and your hearts, and your minds this morning, that you will be empowered to, to silence the, 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 the voice of the enemy in your life this morning. Hallelujah. So what, what are some of the ways in which we can silence this voice of the enemy? You know, uh, there is this voice of doubt that comes when God gives us a promise. When God, you know, tells us, okay, there is this thing that I want you to do. And you're looking at yourself and say, me? Me? I can't do that. You know, you think it's too big for you. Amen? Am I hearing you this morning? You think it's too big for you, right? But numbers uh, 14, uh, 6 to 10, you know, where, where Caleb and Joshua, you know that story, I hope, very well, said to the Israelites, you know, gather there, the land that we saw is very good. It is the land filled with milk and honey and many good things. But the Israelites said, no, we cannot go there. Those people are giants. And them, they see themselves only as grasshoppers. Only as grasshoppers. But Caleb said to them, I will go because I know God is with me. Come and put your hands together for Jesus. And guess what? Caleb and Joshua were the only ones out of those thousands that had faith enough to say, look, if you're not going to go, I'm going. If you're not going to go, look. God said this, this, this line here is good, and you're thinking, oh, I'm too small. If you're not going, then let's go. I'm going. 
But when I go and I get the victory, then you don't come stepping in and saying, oh, this is our victory. No, you got to have the faith. You got to have the faith in God. Like Caleb and Joshua, they, 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 they received the boldness of God. They received, you know, that, that word from God. They said, I, I see the devil speaking in my air, but in the name of Jesus, I know God is with me. And so I'm going. I don't care what comes at me. Sickness may come at me. Poverty may come at me. You know, illness may come at me. People may come at me, but in the name of Jesus, I know who I serve. I know the God I serve. I know he's here with me. I know that if I go, he's victorious. I know I can win. And so I don't care if you come in. I know if God is with me, then I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And I'm going to go and I know I can win in the name of Jesus. And so he went, little Caleb, and he won that victory. Don't see yourself as grasshoppers in the place of giants. We are all people of God. God has created all of us in his own image and likeness. And he has empowered us. He said, when he left, he said, he has given us the power to do even greater works than he had done. Don't be like Peter who, well, you know, when, when Jesus is there, he's stepping on the water. And the minute, he, you know, uh, he looks down and he falls. And that's what we do. You know, we, we're strong. Okay, we're going out. We're doing this thing. And then the minute we hit a hurdle, that devil comes speaking in our air. You don't know what you're doing. You can't do that. You're too poor to do that. You're not smart enough. Look at you. You're ugly. You know, they said you're ugly. God didn't make any ugly people. He made us all beautiful with an apple of his eye. And so when the enemy comes, you said, I don't care what you see outside, but I know I am the apple of God's eye. And you tell him, God has empowered me and he's given me everything that I need. And so I'm going to walk in God's victory. You know, we sing the song today, who has the final say? Jehovah, he has the final say. Hallelujah. So fear cripples us. When we're afraid, fear cripples us. It cripples everything that we're about. It cripples everything that we want to do because we think that we're not good enough. We don't have enough. I mean, so much, so, so many things that the devil put in your air that you're wondering. At the end of the day, you're looking at yourself and say, forget it. I ain't, I ain't bothered with this. But if you trust in God, he's, he said he's going to make you more than a conqueror. He's going to raise you up. People of glad tidings. He says he's going to raise you up. He knows Daphne was here before you came. He knows Gummy was here, Ashburton, Belair. He knows these because he created them. And he said he created us in his image and likeness. So don't think you're too small. Don't see yourself diminished. Don't see yourself as grasshoppers in the, in the land of giants, you know, people who are who, too big and great. We all were made in the apple of God's eye. And so I'm encouraging you, encouraging you this morning to step out in faith and know that God is here for you. Guilt rips us apart. See, when you have, as I said earlier, when you have done the things you know you not ought to do, and now you come back home, you're guilty. When you come to the church, you're guilty. Right? When you go to the job and you know you were doing things that you're not supposed to do, you're guilty. <laughs> Listen, there are so many children being abused today that comes under my care. When you look at these little children, I, I mean, some of the people are coming as adults, but were abused as children. And so I'm admonishing you today. If, if, if what I'm saying would ever fall at the sound of my voice uh, to you or your household or your family, I pray you will stop that behavior now in Jesus' name. Silence that voice of the enemy that says that God or nobody is seeing. Because it's leaving such side effects on people's lives. 
People are growing up in anger and shame and despair. So I'm admonishing you this morning to stop that behavior. Silence the enemy that says that that little child looks good. Amen. Come on, let me hear you this morning. Let me hear you this morning. And if you are a victim, you know, we don't have victims. We don't, we don't call them victims, but you're victorious in Christ Jesus. You're strong enough to know that God is able to help you. And I just pray for deliverance for you this morning and that God will give you the peace if you have suffered this kind of behavior in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't want you to feel discouraged this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands to Jesus this morning. Come on, put your hands to Jesus this morning. Come on, give him praise and glory this morning. Come on, tell the devil you're no longer going to listen to those voices this morning. Come on, praise God this morning because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, we just release grace to every home this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to silence the enemy. You don't have to live in shame. You did not do anything wrong. You did not do anything wrong. But the person that did that thing to you were listening to that voice of the enemy. And so we just pray for repentance this morning in Jesus' name. And so that you will have deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. You can be set free. You don't have to go your whole adult life feeling shame and embarrassed and wondering, God, you know, can anybody find out? We're going to silence those voices this morning in the name of Jesus. The enemy comes in temptation. And when the enemy comes in temptation, the enemy will rule your life. Don't allow him to do that. Right? Plead the blood of Jesus over that situation while you're there in it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is purpose for our lives. Don't feel that you're damaged goods today. I don't care what situation you're coming from. Don't feel like you're damaged goods this morning. Are you hearing me? Come on now. Are you hearing me? The Lord has made you bold and strong and victorious. Don't feel this morning that you're damaged goods. God didn't make any damaged goods. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. But God comes to give life, and he comes to give life abundantly. So we're going to create this internal grace where we can feel empowered, where we can feel blessed, where our lives can move forward, and we can have victory in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. We're not defenseless. We're not defenseless because... God is a God of grace and mercy and forgiveness and happiness and joy and peace. He gives us peace. You know, some of us can't sleep because we don't have peace, but Christ comes to give you peace. And so I just want to release that grace to you this morning in Jesus' name. We have the, the tools to Jesus Christ. We have the tools this morning. And so where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Amen? We have the strength through Jesus Christ, to silence every voice of negativity that comes to us. Every voice of mental health that comes to us. Everything that comes to tell us that we're not good enough. That to tell us that we're not going anywhere. That tells us that we, we have to live in shame and we have to live in all of that. God has given us the grace to move forward and to be empowered so we don't have to believe that lie in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10, 13 says, For through we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, every single one of them, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God for your life and bringing them into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. So you have the tools, and they're right here with you, right in the Word of God. So when the enemy comes, don't feel that you're too small to tell him, get out of here in Jesus' name. Don't feel that afraid to tell him, shut up, 
this is not your house. Don't be afraid to tell him, you don't walk into my relationship and tell me what to do. Don't be afraid when you look at your children's lives and they're going astray. Pray over them. Say something positive to them and tell the enemy, these children have already been blessed and, and released unto God. They belong to him. And so you know what? Though it tarries, it will always come back. They will always come back to God's grace. Don't give up on them this morning. Don't give up on your relationships this morning. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Maybe that's why he sent me with this simple message for you this morning. Don't give up on God. Hallelujah. 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 The weapons we fight is spiritual. They're not, they, they're not carnal. And so you can't expect to come in a carnal uh, way to fight spiritual battles. You're just setting yourself up. So you got to come through the Holy Ghost. You got to come through Christ. You know, uh, the Holy Spirit has been there as our advocate, advocating daily for us. And so when you ask him, though, you know, there are some people who never ask the Holy Spirit to come into their situation. Never. Not even to the church. When you come to church, you never you say, well, Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you to come into this sanctuary and to dwell with us. Most people don't even do that. Do you, do you ask the Holy Spirit to come into your home? Holy Spirit, come into my home. Lord, I'm going through this situation. I want you to come and help me. You got to welcome him in. Because guess what? You know, no visitor is going to come to your home unwelcomed. So if you want him to dwell, you got to welcome him through worship. You got you to gotta welcome him and ask him to come. And he will come and he will dwell with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 So I know our time is fast approaching. I just want to encourage you this morning. As you journey through life, glad tidings. The people in the diaspora, on the Facebook or wherever you're listening from at the sound of my voice this morning. As you're journeying through life, just be mindful of the voices that you listen to. Make sure they're positive voices that is resonating victory over your lives. And if you know they're not, then you know you have a, an advocate that is fighting for you. Cast them down in Jesus' name. Cast them out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hold fast to God's promise and the truth of his word. Because God's word can never fail you. Man will fail you every time. But God's word never fails. Hallelujah. Through prayer, the scriptures, reading the scripture and the word of God, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, you shall overcome. Come on, you need to give God a round of applause for that. You shall overcome. I don't care what situation you may be in today. It may look dismal right now. But trust God with all that you are and you shall overcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So let us walk in victory and let us walk in the abundant life we know God and his promises has for us. May God continue to grant you strength, discernment, so you can discern those spirits. And when they come, may God help you to be able to discern those voices. And when they come, if they're not positive, cast them down. Tell them, I'm not going to listen to you because I know God has a better word for me. And that word is victory. That word is deliverance. That word is peace. That word is joy. That word is happiness. That word is fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. May we find peace today in the loving arm of the Savior, a one who will never leave us, never forsake us, and who will always be our friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands to Jesus this morning. Give him glory. Give him glory this morning because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. And this morning, you have victory and power through Christ Jesus. And know that he will never fail you. I'm a living testimony of that. God will never fail you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if, uh, well, I think we're having uh, communion this morning, but, you know, we just want to get a, a chance to, there might be somebody in this audience this morning who want to give their life to Christ. And I just want to put out an invitation that if you know that you want to serve God this morning, you can come to this altar of grace. God is a God of healing. He's a God of deliverance. You may be out there, and I can still see some heavy hearts this morning. And if you want God to just touch you, you can come to the altar for prayer. Because he has peace for you this morning. You don't have to go home back with a heavy heart. You know, there's a song that says that we don't leave the presence of God the way we came. So I don't want you to go back with, the, with a heavy heart this morning. Know that there's deliverance for you, there's joy for you, and there is peace for you this morning. And it's right here at the altar, so you can come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can come to the altar of grace this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your love and your mercy. In your own special way. Come on, come to the altar of grace this morning. You know, there's healing waiting for you this morning. There is joy waiting for you this morning. Hallelujah. If you need Jesus, don't sit in your seats this morning. Knowing that God's grace in abundance is waiting for you here at the altar this morning. Hallelujah. Come. In your love and your mercy, come in your own special way. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, come, Lord, in your power. Come in your strength and your power. Oh, come in your own special way. Come in your own special way. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus, we pray for freedom 
in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask for forgiveness, oh God, for every sin, oh God, for every hurdle. And we pray, God, Lord, that we'll give him victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for his life, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, God. Hallelujah, God. Father God, we just thank you, God, for our sister, God. Father God, as we bring her, God, before the altar of grace this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, you have seen her tears, God. Father God, you have seen everything that she's been going through, God. Father God, come in your power. Come, oh God, in your grace, oh God. Touch her, God. Heal her, oh God. Deliver her, oh God. Set her free, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, she's been praying for peace, oh God. Give her peace, God. Strengthen her by your power. And oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will just give her healing, oh God. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. God, I touch her home, God. Father God, I touch her family. I touch her marriage, oh God. I touch her children, God. Come, oh God, in your strength and your power. And oh God, just give her peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come, oh God, in your own special way, Jesus. Come on, God. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord. We need you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. By God, I touch your sister, God, by the anointing, by your by prayer, God, and supplication, God. I ask God, Lord, that you will empower her, oh God. By the Spirit, oh God, Father God, I ask for healing, God. From the crown of her head, God, to the sole of her feet. Touch her, oh God, by your power. Touch her, oh God, by your grace, oh God. Touch her, oh God, by your healing. Give her peace, oh God. Break loose, oh God, the chains that binds her legs, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray, Father God, if there is anything, oh God, that's holding her heart, giving her a stony heart, God, I pray you loose her, God. In the name of Jesus, loose her by your power. Loose her by your grace, oh God. In the name of Jesus, touch her, God. Touch her on your own special way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come in your strength, God. Oh, there is nothing, God, impossible for you to do, oh, God. Father God, as I bring, oh God, your servant before you, this woman of grace, oh God. Father God, as she's believing you, God, to do excellent work. In the name of Jesus, God, I touch her, God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. I pray, God, that you'll open up her understanding, oh God. Father God, that you'll make her schoolwork easy, oh God. Father God, from this to forth, God, you'll provide everything that she needs, oh God. Father God, when she sits in that classroom, God, you will give her clarity, God. Clarity of mind, oh God, body and spirit. And God, you will make everything easy for her. Give her the spirit of excellence, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, God. Hallelujah, God. You set the solace, oh God, in families. Hallelujah, Jesus. You set the solace in families, oh God. We silence the enemy's voice over your marriage today. In the name of Jesus, we say, loose your hands off this marriage. In the name of Jesus, God, we release, oh God, your grace in her home, oh God. Father God, we bring her husband before you, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch her by your power. Loose chains, oh God. Father God, we release your grace in her heart, God. That you will give her your peace, oh God. Father God, you will give her your love, oh God. Let her know what love is, God. Oh God, let her experience your love this morning. In the name of Jesus. God, you see how she's been suffering, God.
Hallelujah, Jesus, come Holy Spirit, sweet Spirit, I pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I bring your brother before you, God. You're the great physician. Hallelujah. You're the great physician, oh God. Father God, I pray for healing, oh God. From the crown of his head, oh God, to the sole of his feet. God, you're the God of power. You're the God of strength, oh God. And I pray, God, that you will touch him, oh God. Touch his children, oh God. Touch his family. Touch his home, God. I pray for help for him, oh God. That you will elevate him, oh God. Even as he believes you, God, that you can help his family. I pray, God, for a turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you even now that you have done it, oh God. And we call it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God in your own special way Father God in the mighty name of Jesus God I bring my sister before you God God you know how by name the Bible says oh God that you have numbered oh God the hairs on her head oh God and you know every part of her inward parts and so God I bring every one of those parts to you this morning I ask God that you will touch, heal, and deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind spirit of infirmity this morning. I bind up spirit of sickness this morning. Oh God, you are a God that never fails, oh God. I pray for deliverance and healing for her this morning, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, I pray, oh God, for her son Selway this morning, oh God. For her daughter Susan, oh God. For the grandchildren, oh God. I pray for her home, for her husband Winston, God. Father God, you will touch them all by your grace, by your power, by your healing, oh God. And let there be a turnaround in Jesus' name. Give a victory this morning, oh God. For these blessings, God, we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, God. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, come in your power, God. Come in your strength and your power. Oh, Lord, come in your own special way, Jesus. Father God, as I bring this family before you, God, I bring Miss Sinise and her mom before you this morning, oh, God. Oh, come, Jesus. There must be a turnaround this morning, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind up the spirit, oh God, that will come, oh God, speaking, oh God, to this, the, the, the heirs, oh God, of these children in the name of Jesus. Father God, you know their hearts, oh God. Lord, they're yours, oh God, and I pray for covering over them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I bind spirits, oh God, that we want to lead these children astray in the name of Jesus. I pray for strength, oh God, for this mother, oh God. Father God, I pray for faith for this mother, oh God. Oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will intervene, God, divine intervention, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch her, God, by your grace, God. Touch her, oh God, by your power. Oh God, I pray for her help this morning, God. Jesus, you're a great physician, God. You see what they're going through this morning? Oh God, I wrap them in your love, oh God. And bonds, God, that cannot be broken. And I release deliverance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I release love, God, peace, and grace this morning. In a mighty way, in Jesus' name. God, I pray for Sinise, oh God. Even as she's going out through her studies, oh God, I pray for clarity, God. I pray for wisdom and understanding. And oh God, that you make life easy for her, God. God, you know, the life may have started hard and tough, God. But your loving master, one, oh God, who delivers and heals and loves, oh God. Release your divine love over her, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your peace be her portion this morning. Let your love, oh God, be her portion, God. Let your grace, oh God, be their portion, God, as I dip them in the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, Lord, that you will keep them, oh God, in the palm of your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Father God. Uh-uh. We bind up the spread of blindness, Lord, this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. As I speak to your eyes this morning, I decree and declare that your eyes right now are cleared up and I release vision unto you this morning in Jesus' name. When Jesus is here on earth, he performed miracles and this morning I call on the anointing of sight this morning that God will give you the vision to see that your eyes will be opened in the mighty name of Jesus. Every cataract, every disease that comes to affect your eyes, I bind them this morning and cast them out in the mighty name of Jesus. And I decree that it is well with you in Jesus' name, that you're healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And you have victory in your sight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. you Lord for the family oh God for this little beautiful young lady God that you have brought to the altar this morning oh God I release her father God I release oh God her destiny before you this morning I cover her destiny her education her life in the blood of Jesus I see no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and anything, oh God, that will come against this young life, oh God, Lord, you rebuke it in Jesus' name. I release her future, oh God, unto you, Jesus. And I pray that you will help her. Give her the spirit of excellence, oh God, in her schoolwork, oh God. And help, oh God, to live a good life. And God, just touch, oh God, this young man by your power. Touch this family. Find them, oh God, in love that cannot be broken. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. you oh god and god we use her oh god as a point of contact this morning for the many young people of god who no longer wants to serve you god but i pray i dip him in the blood of jesus his life his future his destiny oh god and i pray oh god you will touch his stony heart god that you will come oh god before you god giving his life to christ living for jesus father god i pray oh god for this mother Lord, you have seen her tears, oh God, over her children. Oh God, you have seen her tears over her children. I pray you give her victory, joy, and peace this morning, oh God. Let her see, oh God, that her children are living for you, Lord. It's her desire, God. And I pray God will grant her her wish in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch her by your grace, your joy, and your power. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you're the great physician. And as this woman, oh God, is believing you to be, oh God, in the surgery room, I'm believing you, God, for a miracle of healing in Jesus' name. God, you will touch her, oh God, by your healing power. You will touch her, God, by your grace, God. Lord, that you will heal her, oh God, and make her whole, God. Renew spirit in Jesus' name. Renewed body in the name of Jesus. As we dip her body, God, whatever she's having surgery for, we dip it in the blood of Jesus for healing and restoration in the name of Jesus. And we decree, sister, it is done in Jesus' name. That you believe God this morning. That he's not only going to take you to the, you know, the surgery room, but he's going to deliver you and make you whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. showing me, oh God, her heart has been sad for so long, oh God. I pray you touch her, God. Touch her by your power, God. Touch her by your healing grace, oh God. Touch her by your love, oh God. 
Father God, I bring the entire family before you, God. I dip them in the blood of Jesus, and I pray, God, there is deliverance for your family and restoration in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name. strength and your power. Oh, come, oh, Lord, in your strength and your power. Come in a great mighty way, God. Come in your own special way. Father God, I bring these students before you, oh, God. Father God, you bring the solace in families, God. You release wisdom unto us, Standing, oh God. And Father, even as they're about, oh God, to take that exam this morning, I pray you give them clarity, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding about the coursework, oh God. Make it clear, God, and easy for them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray for covering, oh God, over their minds, God. Every blockage I release in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that nothing will hinder you as you walk into that classroom. You'll come out victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for healing over you. I pray for grace over you. As you go, go in peace and come back in excellence. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.